so hello my name is Helen um, for those of you that don't know me I am on Twitter as Helen Lee which is on my um, handily thing here um, and I do a lot of quite odd technology um, and some of which I'm going to show you today and um, some of which is going to be in a slide and then I've got some bits and bobs down by the side of me as well including some really cool new PCBs that um, I've been working on so um, without further ado let's open up my presentation if I can figure out how to share my screen and I'll tell you a bit about the kind of stuff I do. All right, share, here we go. Share computer sound, we can do that. Good, good, all right. So let's move you out of the way. Okay, great. So, all right, so I said I was gonna talk just about music hacking, but um, I've done a lot of stuff recently with soft electronics as well, and I thought it would be pretty cool to show you some of those projects too. And often actually they're kind of smushed together and they are one and the same. Um, so that's what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, my name is Helen Lee on Twitter, Helen Lee Makes on Insta, um, although I'm not very good at Insta to be honest, um, I don't really use it that much, just as a portfolio thing. And then my terrible GitHub is there. Um, and I mainly put my GitHub on my slides to shame myself into documenting the things um, that I do a little bit more. So if, if I do talk about a project and I haven't documented it, um, you know, it's this eternal like battle, isn't it, between documenting and making. So if there is something there that you kind of like and would like to recreate, do feel free to like um, ask me on Twitter and I'll, I'll chuck up a little instruction set on my GitHub if enough people um, whinge at me. So um, please do. All right. So, um, oh yeah, brief introduction to myself. Um, I am um, a writer, I write about electronics, physical computing, um, and um, so on. This is a still from my book that I did last year. It's called The Crafty Kid's Guide to DIY Electronics, and it teaches basic analog electronics through the medium of craft. So paper craft, origami, robotics, um, and lots and lots of um, sewable circuits as well, which is super fun. Um, I'm also, um, I write a lot for Hackspace magazine. I've written for Hackaday. Um, and I'm, I'm, well, nobody knows this yet, but I'll tell you, um, I'm the new hardware columnist for Make Magazine as well. So I've got some stuff coming out there. Uh, I also write lots of curriculum as well, but nobody wants to hear about that. It's very boring. Um, aside from my writing work, or I guess in conjunction with my writing work, I do a lot of um, musical instrument design, um, including some product design, but also including some like weird art nonsense that will never be sold. Um, this is the um, product design end of it. This is a project. This is actually my hand as well. Um, I'm a, a hand model amongst my many other strange talents. Um, this is a product that I designed for Imogen Heap and P. Maroney, which is um, a DIY wearable, gesture controlled, bleepy bloopy sound maker. Um, and it was designed as a, as a kind of teach your kids to code kind of kit. Um, but actually it's got quite a lot of cachet with musicians who really like the Mimu um, technology. So the Mimu itself is, is this really awesome glove. It's like 2,000 euro though, so 2,000 pounds um, each, I think. Um, and it's got lots of cool gestures on it. And basically you can, inter you can interact with your door, your musical workstation um, in, in real life as if you're playing it with an actual instrument. And it's been on Ariana's tour and all this kind of, oh, sorry, Ariana, Ariana Grande's tours and like, so it's a proper piece of kit, but I was really inspired by it and I wanted to create a child-friendly budget version. So this is my um, attempt at that. <laughs> um, it's like, I, I basically wanted to create something that was inspired by it, but cost less than $50. Um, so, so I did it. Um, and actually this is, um, this is um, a kind of a cute little sewable speaker on the front there as well. Um, but yeah, basically kids sew it together and then they learn how to program it and then they wire it up and then they make music. And it actually will, so it, you know, the onboard on a micro bit, so the, the, the microcontroller inside of it that the kids are coding is a micro bit, um, which is a fairly simple little microcontroller that you're probably all familiar with. Um, but of course there's not much space on a micro bit, so you can't, re you can't put samples on it. You can only do chip tune music, you know, like square wave music. 
Um, so I've, um, I have managed to make it talk to a door though through, um, sorry, to, to, I've made it talk to professional um, music software using radio and a second micro bit um, that is connected by serial. All the details, I'm rushing through this particular one because all the details for this are actually up on my GitHub so you can have a little look at that. Um, that's quite fun and there's been lots of spin-off projects for that. As I said, like it was designed for children to learn to code but um, it was pretty cool that a lot of musicians who were eyeing up Imogen's like what I'd call the proper club, um, they um, they couldn't afford it. So um, there's been a lot of kind of creative work that's come out of this very simple children's sewing kit. So that's one of my products. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, I do a lot of um, what I'd call, I guess, sound sculpture stuff. Um, kind of unusual musical instruments. I'm just going to show you a, um, a clip of me playing um, one of them. Um, hopefully it'll work. So that's actually my first ever um, circuit sculpture sound thing that I made. I made that at a hackathon uh, music technology hack um, last year in Frankfurt with um, a couple of friends. Um, and it really captured my imagination. I've been involved in the sound tech world, uh, sorry, the um, sound art world, I guess. Um, uh oh, hang on. Yeah, I've been involved um, in the sound art world for a little while, being um, part of a, a hacker group that came out of uh, London hack space called Hackoustic. Um, so I'm part of the Hackoustic fa um, family. They're really, really great. If anybody's in or near London, they do every other month, they do like a, um, a, a really awesome um, community event where music hackers get together and kind of demo their works in progress. And it's like five quid entry. So I'd really, once the apocalypse ends, I'd really recommend you look up Hackoustic. Anyway, so I've been involved in doing Hackoustic stuff before. I've been making little breadboard synths and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I was really interested in um, less the noise aspect of music, of like sound art. Like I don't, I like my music to sound like music. So I started experimenting with the form of the instruments um, and um, how to embed, like a lot of the time when you're making kind of DIY synths, um, they've, a lot of them got, I don't know, especially the DIY ones, they kind of sound a bit jagged. And I really um, wanted to make beautiful ethereal sounds um, that um, that um, came out of these otherworldly creatures. So I started making a range of those. There's that one. I've got one that's like a big sub bass that's based on a peacock spider, and um, that's made of uh, brass. The original, the the first one that I showed you just now is made of steel. Um, and I also am working on a giant human sized um, kind of an abstract. Um, cephalopod, I guess, um, which you can see the samples for it um, in, in this slide. And so um, I'll show you what this has mo moved to at the end of the talk, actually. But to, so I've started experimenting with the different, different forms for musical instruments. Um, while I, I work with quite a traditional composer to create the sounds, but the technology that I'm using, um, which has allowed me to do this, is this super cool, um, group of people, group of um, experimental musicians. Okay, so most of you will have heard of the Beagle Bum, uh, Beagle Board. Um, so I use the Beagle Board, um, but I use a special cape that goes on top of it. I think I might have a, 
Oh, here we are. I've, I've, I've gone ahead of myself. Um, right. So, so this is another one of my projects that uses the same technology, and I'll talk about the tech afterwards. So, in this, in this, this is a um, this is a work in progress I've got at the moment, um, which kind of works. It's not perfect, but kind of works. This is a wearable vocoder that you um, that you trigger by touching your neck basically so it's quite performative it's just experimental i mean the reason i came up with this is that osh park started offering flex pcbs and i was really excited about the idea of making you can see that in the left hand side there this the the the, the pcb that's on the left hand side it's flexible i just put electrical tape on the back to make it less brown and then that's hooked up to um, a capacity, really good, awesome new capacitive touch sensor that I've been using called the Trill. And then you can also see the Bella there, which is what I'm going to talk to you about. Um, so the point of this slide was really like, oh yeah, I'm working on vocoders. Also, Flex PCBs are super cool and awesome, and you should totally, definitely try them. Um, they used to be super expensive, but um, you can get them for not that mu not that much on Osh Park now, which is super cool. And they laser cut; they don't root the boards; they laser cut the boards, so you can do really interesting sounds, uh, shapes. I mean, anyway. This is the microcontroller that I've been using. Well, it's not a microcontroller, it's a single load computer. Um, it's a beagle board underneath. This is a pocket beagle underneath. And then this is a cape, um, the Bella cape. So Bella is, um, comes out of a, um, uh, the Augmented Instruments Labs, which is a Queen Mary University Research Institute um, over in East London. Um, and they basically make the beagle board really, really good for um, audio. Now, those of you who are using Pi will know that it's not amazing for a low latency audio. Um, but the Bella, I mean, for my money, the Bella is the, the best micro, con uh, sorry, single board computer out there for embedded instrument stuff. So basically, yeah, I use Bella as my brain, right? Um, for many reasons, which I won't go into here, but like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's great for latency, like really, really good latency. And also you can use this. So this is a piece of software called Pure Data, which is an open source way of creating um, noises, essentially. It's kind of like um, Max for Live, but open source. And um, the cool thing about the Bella is that you can save this file you can make a file like a really nice sounding audio file and save it directly onto the bella and it will then boot it so you can have embedded synthesis um in in a much in a much more elegant way than you can with other boards with low latency so i'm a massive fan girl of of bella and pure data so that's kind of what i use a lot for my sculptures um yeah yeah but what time have i got okay halfway fine um and then, so that's, that's a very, very quick rundown of my, <laughs> of my uh, recent set of uh, sculpture kind of um, playing things. And then oh, this is another fun thing that I made recently. Um, so um, uh, one of the things I really like to do is experiment with electronics in embroidery. I really like, I don't know, I kind of like the cultural um, dissonance of oh god I sound so pretentious but never mind um <laughs> maybe I am a bit um I, I I like I like how weird it feels to have electronics in some in things that are soft and squishy and strokeable um so I really like looking at soft robotics I'm really interested in electronic embroidery and this is a project that I made um I made very recently actually um, I think it's got a little video. So this is a crackle box. Um, and if any of you know anything, uh, know um, about, have, have been playing with analog electronics for music, there's a wonderful book, one of the iconic music tech books um, called Handmade Electronic Music. I think it's from the 80s or maybe early 90s. I don't know. Anyway, it's by this guy called Nicholas Collins. And it was kind of, I don't know. Um, for, for me, it was, it was a big influence. Um, so I wanted to make a synthesizer that was based on a project from Handmade Electronic Music, but I wanted to give it a twist that was a bit me. So I took, the, um, I took one of his crackleboard circuits and I embroidered it. Um, so this, this is it. So a, crack, a crackle box is, um, is a, um, 
I won't lie, it's a terrible sounding instrument. <laughs> it's very bad, <laughs> um, but it's kind of fun. It uses your, your skin as variable resistors um, within the circuit. And it's using this chip called the LM386, um, which I've been having a go at. And this is, um, yeah, this is what it sounds like. So this is um, copper embroidery. Told you it sounds terrible, but it's still really fun. Um, so this is copper. This is a lovely thread. It's a copper embroidery thread, um, which is the only, well, one of two threads, I've, like sewing threads, I found that you can solder. So this particular design, I had to solder the thread directly onto the legs of the dip chip, um, which was really annoying because thread is way more flimsy than um, normal wire and it doesn't do what it's told uh, and it's, yeah, so that was extremely annoying. Uh, but I've come up with, well, me and, um, and Drew, uh, PDP7 have come up with um, a solution for that, which I'll show you at the end of the presentation. But yeah, so that's, that's my funny little um, a little embroidered synth that I've been working on. I was supposed to be doing that as a workshop at Ableton Live, but of course the world is cancelled, so I'm not. Um, right, what's next? Oh, here we are. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I put this slide in here. Oh yes, I remember. Um, so this is some, this is one of my early makes. This is from years ago. Like my years ago. What a lie! That's like two years ago. It's like two. Yeah, two and a half years ago I made this. Um, and it was probably one of my first popular makes. And this is a, um, a gesture controlled robot unicorn that is actually really rubbish. Um, it uses continuous rotation servos instead of proper H bridge and, um, you know, like proper motors. And so basically not only are the servos, left and right servos always like completely out of sync with each other. So it's wobbly as all hell. You can't make it kind of like via left or via right you have to make it go round and round on the spot but the thing is about rubbish robotics is that they're actually very endearing so um people really like them um so this is this has got nothing to do with music but the thing that came out of it does and this is more like a story about um how fun it is to um smush together your skills with um other people's skills so i made this herd of um robot unicorns um which um, were very silly and very unreliable and extremely um, cute and, and personable. Um, and then I got talking to um, um, a, an artist she, who works with leather and she made me, she really wanted a robot and in exchange she made me this elbow length um, leather glove which has got a micro bit embedded in it so I could control my herd of robot unicorns like some kind of evil dictator it was really fun um, and got me lots of dodgy dms on instagram as well but we won't go there um, so that's the that's the the, the, rub the robot glove, that's super fun. And then I ended up working with another artist called Martine um, Nicole Rogina, and she's really awesome. I met her through the music tech community. Um, and what she does, like her job um, as an artist is she, she records sounds and then she works with a, um, she works with a, what do you call it? Like a, a, um, a big telescope. Um, it's not, oh God, I can't remember the, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like a, it's like a, a transmitter and she basically points the big transmitter, um, at the moon and bounces these sounds, um, off of the moon and then records what they sound like when they come back. So essentially using the moon as a big filter for her sounds and she's known as the moon bounce girl. So anyway, um, I started working with her and I it ended up turning this glove um, into a way to control her um, the sounds of a, of a cello that has been bounced off of the moon. Now, if you'd have asked me like where this robot unicorn project would have gone when I started making it, I probably would have said in the bin after about six weeks. But the fact is, by talking about it a little bit online and being very, very open and in fact pursuing um, collaborations with people who had completely different skills to me um, I was able to create some you can create a really unique instrument um, 
that lots of people really enjoyed. Um, so I, I always bang the drum about people collaborating with people who don't have the same skills as them. So I was, I was very impressed with my glove and, and then the girl who made me the glove was very impressed with my rubbish robot. So um, it made us both feel good about our own skills. And um, what we got here, we've got eight minutes left. All right, cool, perfect. Right, so I'm gonna come out of this screen thing. Let's remove this share, stop share. Why? No, there we are, stop share. All right, hello again, everybody. Um, um, and I want to show you um, some cool PCBs um, and the thing that the tentacle has become. Um, and, if, and then I've got a couple of questions, a couple of minutes of questions as well, um, if anybody has any. So this is the really fun um, flexible PCB that we saw um, and the Bella thing. This is the vocoder interface. This is super fun. Um, I would highly recommend having a go on flex PCBs just because they're just great fun to have a go on. Um, I would, um, I mean, I would, I would make sure that if you're using a flex PCB, you use this. This is a, like, essentially you use like, oh, that almost focused. Good job, webcam. So we've got one, two lines of parallel holes here. So if you are having a go at flex PCB and you are doing something that's moving, always have like this kind of, this is a strain relief hole. This actually isn't electrically connected. It just means that when this wire is moving around, you're not putting any stress on the solder joint here. So would recommend you have a go on that. You can also, if you are using KiCad, you can also get something called a teardrop plugin, um, um, which, Let's see if I've got an example of it. Basically, it means that when this is flexing around, the square bits of the trace on the PCB don't um, don't uh, don't break each other. So you're know, just reducing the strain essentially. Um, and here's my um, embroidered little embroidered synthesizer. Um, you can see underneath just about because it's all sewn in. You can see where I've individually soldered the thread to the dip chip and then stuck it on with hot glue, which works, but like, let's be real, it's a total pain and nobody wants that. So what I've been doing is I've made um, these cute little circuit boards here um, to, for the dip chip to go onto. Um, and then we've got, so the, you've got the little, the little dip chip here, we'll go in there and then here we've got two two rows again i thought this would be interesting because it's another little pcb tip that you wouldn't know unless you were um making things for sewing for a long time so you can see here you've got um oh, this autofocus is the worst get my face out of the way oh well okay i'll just describe it anyway so you've got one row of um one row of holes and then you've got another row of holes that are cut by the routing board so that's like what you call a castellated edge, right? These are normally used for different purposes, but they're also amazing for sewing. So if you've got a castellated edge, it means that you can sew your conductive thread through this hole and then back around and you've got a little loop, a nice little loop that you can loop onto. So castellated edges are great. And then we've got here is another example of a tiny flex circuit board as well for the little dip package. And these are all open source hardware. so. Um, if anybody wants to do any kind of like sewing with a dip package, they're all on. I think they're on um, PDP7's GitHub, actually. Um, so those are my fun. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show you is this is the most recent. I wonder if you can see this. I'm going to have to. I'm probably going to knock everything over. But this is the most recent um, tentacle that I've made. So. So you know, you saw the uh, the circuit sculpture creature that I made. Um, that is going to be this big cephalopod. I made these um, these big limbs. It's quite large, like human sized leg. Um, I made this big limb um, to test essentially because I'd never machine embroidered conductive thread from here for, for this longer distance. I didn't know if it would have changed the capacitance or something. Anyway, so I made this weird limb, and I took it to a hacker conference, and everybody just wanted to cuddle it. Um, which was really cute and funny. So I thought I'd put a microcontroller in it and make it do something. So this was just a test piece, um, but it now is its own thing in, in its own right. So basically what you do is when you can cuddle it and you put your headphones in, and then when you stroke it and squeeze it, 
it purrs to you. So it's like a giant purring, cuddly pillow. It's, it sounds ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Obviously, it's ridiculous. But also, it's surprisingly heartwarming. Uh, <laughs> like everyone in my hacker space just adores it. Um, so <laughs> I think that's a good a note as any to end on. I hope you like um, my strange, noisy creations. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions, let me know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, we did have a question. Here we are. <laughs> Take my money there, Isla. Well, I've actually just finished filming the making of that particular one. So I'll, um, I'll put the patterns online. Um, I mean, so, something I learned, because like back in the day, I used to, um, I used to make my own, um, something that lots of us have toyed with in the hacker community. Um, I, I used to make my own like kits and assemble them and like send them out to people, right? Um, but after my first small success, I decided that I hated putting things in envelopes and sending them to people and that I would never, ever, ever make my own product ever again. Um, so <laughs> like, when people are like, I definitely buy that, I'm like, cool, I'm never gonna make it. It's not for me. <laughs> it was very stressful. Oh, here we are. What's your top tip for getting into music and electronics? Well, I've got lots actually, um, but seeing as I have two minutes, I'll give you one minute worth. Um, so, um, I would say that if you're if you're like total total beginner, you can't go wrong with a makey makey or a bear conductive. Um, they're great little microcontrollers that you can't really, you basically load for a bare conductive, it's like touchable samples and that's what, and it works straight out of the box. It's great for um, beginning and you don't have to code unless you want to go further into it. And then Makey Makey is wonderful. It turns anything into a keyboard essentially. And there's loads, if you Google Makey Makey music, there's a lovely, lovely video of people who've done really creative things with their Makey Makey. Those would be my go-to entry level, I want to make a musical instrument microcontrollers. Um, they're not that flexible. You can't really use them for learning to code, really. Um, but if you want to just make a musical instrument, they're great to start with. As you get further and further in, I would say like, it's not like my first microcontroller, but the Bella is a wonderful embedded instrument um, machine, 100%. But it's not like, it's definitely not like my first microcontroller. Um, I'd also say if you're more interested in the coding, there's a really lovely thing called Sonic Pi. Um, so you don't have, that's not microcontroller based. Um, but Sonic Pi by Sam Aaron is a lovely way of teaching. And it's also great for grumpy teenagers as well that you don't have to talk to, don't want to have to talk to for a whole day. You just like put them in front of it and they're suddenly making like really sick beats, but they've got their headphones on, so it's not your problem. They're also learning how to code as well. So that's definitely like a hangover day teaching tip is Sonic Pi. Don't even touch it. Um, yeah, that's my, yeah, I've got another one here. So um oh what's the wire and coat hangers no it's a, it's a roll of steel wire and um, the that i had in my bag so yeah um and then what reliability issues do you have with wearable tech you have issues over time well actually one of the things that's super annoying about a lot of wearable stuff is that the thread is really bad um, so the thread that you, until, well, you, the thread, for example, like the Katronic thread is like terrible. It's like shortcuts, short circuit city. Like it's so, if you hold it up to the light, it's like full of wires. Imagine if you, you know, like full of threads everywhere. So it's like, it looks like my hair is so frizzy. Like, so you don't want to, you know, if that's not good, that's not a good look for electronics. You know, you don't want to have like short circuit city with your basic materials. Um, and um, so using a good quality thread, definitely. So I use, um, I've, I found a really good one recently. Well, not really, really good, but the best so far. It's by a company called Madeira, who are a professional embroidery. Um, they make embroidery thread. They don't make electronic stuff. And they've just released a conductive thread, which is made of silver. And you can use it in your sewing machine, like normal thread. You can hand stitch with it. It's by far the best thread out there, um, but yeah. Um, and also, you know, the things about wearable tech is like things move and stretch. Um, you're going to have things that break. I would recommend if you're looking, there's a wonderful talk that I saw um, 
there's a, a so you should all 100% be following this girl called Sophie Wong on Twitter if you're interested in wearables. Um, and she's got a free book out that Hackspace magazine published called Wearables. But she's also got a really great talk that she did at Teardown in Portland last year. So if you Google Sophie Wong Wearables Teardown Portland, maybe Teardown is probably enough. Um, there's like an hour long talk and she talks exactly about that, about reliability issues, about designing for the body. Um, it was a really interesting, fun talk. Yes, nice link line. Um, Richard, why so many micro bits? Unusual talks. It wasn't an unusual choice. I guess I was living, living. I was, I was, my hacker space was right next door to Tech or Save Us um, as the micro bit was being de um, developed. Um, and they were a key partner in that. Um, I guess it wasn't the, it wasn't the, you know, I, I learned, I actually learned on the Intel Galileo, which is a god awful board, if you remember that, um, before the Arduino. And then I kind of, I don't know, I just kind of fell in love with the micro bit. I really enjoyed the versatility of it. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I just liked the micro bit. Um, I was teaching a lot at the time as well. And teaching with the micro bit is a lovely experience. Um, so, yeah, I have no particular you know, a, a, you know, a, a no particular brand loyalty to the micro bit. I use lots of other microcontrollers as well. Um, but yeah. Um, languages on the micro bit. I use MicroPython. Um, and I also use block code for some things as well. In fact, for the gesture controlled moon bounce thing, that was all block code. Um, if you can do it in block code, I mean, why not? If you can just shove it in, what's wrong with it? Block code is coding. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll pop some links to previous presentations. I do have an, if you're interested in music tech, I did at CCC do um, 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 an annual conference between Christmas, uh, sorry, Chaos Computing Club, they're a big hacker group in, um, in Germany, and they have a big conference. And I did a talk on music tech hacking, um, and for, um, which looked at the history of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop um, and some, some, um, some old school, um, like 1940s, 1950s, um, music concrete hacking stuff. Um, so I will um, bang that in the chat. Um, but yes, I think I've had my time now. So unless there's a wireframe skull. Yes, it is. It is a wireframe skull. Hang on. I'll put it on. It's a piece by my friend. Creepy, huh? <laughs> It's a good one. <clears throat> great, thanks very much, Ellen. That's really great. You're very Thank welcome. You. Thank you, Bob. Because we can clap here. <laughs> <laughs>